Here's another example of a photo that I've applied a texture to to create a weathered and worn look. In this case, it looks like the photo could have been taken around the time the, this abbey was originally built over a hundred years ago, and it has suffered under you know wear and tear in, in the century or more since then. But that's not its true story. It started out just a few years ago as a perfectly nice photo coming right out of a digital camera with a few, few imperfections or flaws. But what I've done is I've applied this texture, this photographic texture again in this case, uh, to the image to create that weathered look. This texture is from French Kiss Textures at FrenchKissTextures.com. And I've applied it in this case not with a blending mode but as a layer mask. What I found was when I started out I tried a number of different blending modes as I showed <clears throat> in the previous uh, example. But none of them was really providing the effect that I was after, so I took this alternative approach of creating uh, a layer mask out of the texture, which I'll uh, illustrate next. So I'm going to switch over to this other copy in which I start out with the, uh, the, the original photo. And I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is bring in the, the photographic texture. So I'm going to switch over to Bridge. And here's the texture file. And again, I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to do Place in Photoshop and Photoshop places it into the document that I currently have open. Now I'll demonstrate the process I used to load the brightness levels of this uh, this texture as a layer mask. To do that I went into the channels palette and I just control clicked on the RGB channel. Doing that loads the brightness, uh, the brightest parts of the channel. Uh, I could have used any one of these channels, the red, the green, or the blue. In this particular case there's a little difference between them. There's a little bit more red than there is uh, the most other colors. But uh, this was close enough. Uh, this isn't exact work that I'm doing in terms of using this as a layer ma uh, mask to, uh, to provide a texture. So you can get a better idea of just what's selected if I switch into quick mask mode. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click the quick mask icon. And now you can see that as usual the, the lightest areas of, the, uh, of this image are the ones that are selected and the darker images are the ones that are not selected or, or at least least selected. So what that's showing is what's going to be most selected or what's going to show through most on the actual image is the brightest parts that are shown here. I'm going to switch out of quick mask mode. I'm going to go back to the layers uh, panel and I'm going to turn off the visibility of my texture. I'm going to click on my actual photo layer and then I'm going to add a layer mask. And since I had a selection, an active selection, when I clicked the layer mask icon it applied that selection as the mask. Now we're getting somewhere, we're starting to get a sort of a torn appearance or worn appearance. Uh, but well, as you can see, you we're seeing a lot of transparency here. That's just what I wanted, but I don't want to see the checkerboard pattern behind here. So I'm going to control click on the new layer icon to create a new layer below that layer. And I'm going to fill it with a gray color. So let me select a sort of mid to bright, sort of on the brighter side uh, of a gray. I'll click OK. And then I'll simply hit Alt Backspace and that fills this layer with this gray color. And now it's starting to look like uh, a photo that has uh, some weathering going on and maybe the paper is showing through from behind. However, I wanted to go for a more extreme look. I wanted to make this look really weathered. And um, to do that, what I need to do is reduce the amount of area that's selected in this layer mask. Now one way to do that is to apply a levels adjustment to it. And that's exactly what I did. I went to the image, adjustments, levels command. And I increased the, the amount of blacks, the, the amount of shadows. So as you can see, watch if you watch the layer mask as I'm changing the slider down here, you'll notice that uh, the, the you'll see more black around the edges. I'm going to go back to the original. Okay, this is how it was before I started in and watch the layer mask as I'm pu pulling this up and you see more and more of the layer mask is becoming black, which allows more and more of the background to show through. It, it selects less of the image and allows more of the background to show through. So I'm going to stop somewhere around there. Now that's getting, that's looking pretty good. Um, let me zoom in so we can see better. I'm going to zoom in to fill the screen. 
And so there was another thing that I wanted to do. It was looking pretty good, but I wanted to add a hue saturation adjustment layer to tweak this a little bit more. So I came down here and I clicked my hue saturation adjustment and I dialed down my saturation by a, to about minus 50. And by doing that, I, get, I increased the appearance of having an older aged photograph that may not have even had good color when it was first taken and since then has continued to suffer. And I just popped up the uh, the lightness a little bit to give it an even more faded sort of a look. And that's it. That's how this image was created.